particular. So going to be the Zoo, it looks like, from Wubu right away against the Aggro Shaman of Luby's lovely Chook here. Okay, so this is a matchup I have not played much at all. Even though I've seen quite a lot of Shaman and the Face Hunter, the, the Zoo stuff is something I haven't seen much of. So how do you see this one progressing? Um, it's very much like... The way it plays out is very much like Face Hunter versus Zoo, except it's not as uh, favored for the Shaman as Face right. Hunter is. So basically, yeah. whoever gets the early advantage most likely wins the game, because if you can get the early advantage with Shaman, you're able to just push damage to face and win the game that way. And if the uh, excuse me, if the Zoo is able to take early advantage, then, you know, the Shaman has to fight back for the board, or, you know, they try to futilely go for the face, and they basically just, you know, lose that race. Right, and these Fell Spirits are actually going to be quite important then in this match, as they are good at grabbing that early board while you hide your guys behind them and then start blasting away at the face or at, at the minions if you have to, of course. Right. So that seems like a pretty decent opening hand to me. And the zoo hand, he won't mind it normally, but it's actually kind of slow. Right. I mean, in a lot of situations, if you're playing, for instance, against a more controlling class, you're not too worried about, uh, or you're kind of okay with the hand that you have. But going against the Shaman, you really need to shut down the aggression of the Shaman player. And in particular, you know, these Feral Spirits will be a pain in the neck here for Boo Boo. Yeah, and with the Earth Shock we see there as well, so he's going to be able to pick one of these minions to silence, and that's often a big thing against Zoo as well. Um, the egg in particular could prove dangerous if he manages to cut that off, or he may just save it for you know, a rainy day. He's going to have the board anyway, as the Shaman here, so... Right, and it's really difficult to know when to use Earthshock as a Shaman, right? Because if you can take away a minion, for instance, that Egg or you know, the Honda Creeper, and really shut off the Zoo's ability with, to trade with you, then that could obviously help you down the road. And however, you might need it for you know a big taunt in the future, so mm -hmm. it's really interesting how you're going to use that. It, it usually depends on what your options are, right? If you have a Slam Dunk, op slam dunk option, excuse me, uh, you might have to go for that rather than using the Silence if it you know takes up your mana, which you need. Uh, yeah, this is just how complicated this decision is. It's just um, turn to, do you play your egg? Do you play your spider? Do you want to try and get rid of this leopard gnome, or do you want to set up the egg? Um, setting up the egg, be interesting to see how Lovely Cheat responds to that. Uh, especially after that long pause, which could be a giveaway that there was um, other stuff you could be doing. Right. It, it, it is pretty difficult for Lovely Chook here because if you go for the Urshock, you're not really doing anything other than Urshocking, right? Um, right. And it, but, well, however, if you go for the um, feral spirits then you know if there's something like an abusive sergeant then even though a Nerubian comes out your feral spirit doesn't even die so that's kind of nice as well uh, by the way it looks like we have a couple of questions in chat for people who are just arriving this is our second best of three series best of five series of the day there are three going to be cast today this is the last series of the round of 16 so after this the round of 16 is over and we will be casting the round of eight uh starting with the next series which will be zoro versus love cx just to catch you guys up on that and yeah, and Ray Allen won the first match 3-2 against Lebo, so um, that's what happened earlier, and that was a pretty good match, so you can catch that on the VOD at some point. Yep. So, um, uh, we have a few options here for Lovely Joe. He could go for the Urshock to take out this uh, Haunted Creeper, he could go for Finley to get himself a bit of a better hero power. Uh, or he could go for the Lightning Bolt. Looks like he's going for Finley and likely going to go with the Hunter Hero Power. Uh, Priest isn't the greatest against Zoom because they typically were able to catch up on the board. And you're, basically your uh, deck doesn't drive well with it unless you're in a face-versus-face uh, -face matchup. And Zoom isn't necessarily face. Yeah, a meme that I quite often throw out there when it comes to um, Hunter Power versus Warlock Power is the fact that they both do two damage to the same person. Um, which makes it really bad for the for the zoo, for the warlock to actually be tapping away and trying to keep up. Um, exactly. And he needs to at the moment with this pretty heavy hand. Uh, he doesn't need to this turn, but he's going to need to tap in this game at some point if he's going to keep up. Is what I mean. I was thinking about what kind of heavy handed joke that I could uh, make there, wow. but I uh, couldn't come up with one. I think you just managed one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this abuse sergeant actually isn't too bad for Woo Woo here because it allows him to play, you know, two more minions onto the board rather than, you know, floating a minion or floating a man, excuse me, in this case. But uh, unfortunately, he won't be able to clear the board. We'll be able to clear a lot of stuff, however. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he goes for a kill on Mer uh, Surfing the Murgleton, which does have good traits in the future, but you kind of want to just get rid of this Leopard Gnome just to take off the damage. Yeah, and he does so. Yeah, his 
and again, like we saw in the previous in the Hunter match, you don't mind going wide and getting stuff against Shaman. Um, it just doesn't deal with your stuff. So having two one ones against some classes is a liability because they just get picked off with AOE. But here, they are actually just two more power on the board um, for you to do what you want with. And right, so it's starting to become a little bit menacing now. From exactly, of... and we could see a feral spirit here that would overload uh, Lovely Chook for two. Obviously, the next turn he could also go for the lightning bolt onto this Nerubian egg just to get it off the board, uh, which would allow him. Uh, speaking of Lovely Chook, to have two mana the following turn, which is not too unreasonable, obviously. Uh, and it could also he could also actually pick up something with this uh, Sir Finley. That I mean, obviously one damage to face is okay uh, over the long run, but taking off some of these minions might allow him to use his hero power even more. Yeah, it seems like a good turn to just completely overload himself um, in case he does top deck that Doom Hammer or something that's actually relevant um, for five mana or for a lot of mana. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't want to be overloaded on turn six onwards with that. Right. So get it out of the way while you can in one turn rather than spread it over several turns. And a lot of players would be tempted to just hit the face here in this situation. And, but I think I definitely agree with Lovely Chook here because you have the inevitability of that hero power. As long as you don't see Malganus come down and, you know, too quickly here, that 100 hero power will be very useful as we see an implosion come down. Wow, hits for four. That is extremely good for Wubu and uh, Lovely Chook. Cannot be happy about that at all. I mean, if that that's that might be the game, honestly. If that, yeah. if that went for two, then Lovely Chook likely wins. If it goes for three, it's still probably good for Wubu. Um, and, but hitting for four there is absolutely devastating for Lovely Chook. Yeah, the, the magnitude of that card's always doubled in like extremities. It's like it's a card that yeah, if he rolls two, you've done four points of stuff. If he rolls three, you've done six points of stuff. If he rolls four, you've done eight points of stuff. So when you do roll that one of the ends, it usually swings the game one way or the other. Um, and we would like yeah. stuff. So I mean, getting as many points as stuff is. Is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Stuff's always a thing in this game. Stuff and things are both things you want in this game. <laughs> and so love that you're committing to the ancestral knowledge here. I think it would have been better for him to go a bit all in here. And it seems weird, but I think all in would be to just hero power, if that makes any sense, right? Because you're trying to maximize damage. And maybe by committing damage here, you can ancestral knowledge into something like a lava shock and really kind of you know starting to put the pressure on your opponent. But uh, Wubu just you know getting rid of that Doctor Boom in hand and just going with the Doom Guard to put as much uh, pressure to his opponent as possible. And he is definitely winning the race with uh, what I... looks like twelve damage on board. And Lovely Chook obviously just, obviously just has to play from hand. I really like that play. There, a lot of players there will be like, oh no, don't want to discard my Doctor Boom and my. Uh, Malganis, which is no, just stick it on the board, do five to the face, get on with it. And I really like that. A lot of players would just hold back there trying to keep some value in a match that isn't a value match. It's a can I smash him in the face match now. Right, exactly. Uh, and if you if you look at the situation here, I mean Wu has lethal in two turns right now, right? And yeah. if you had if he had played the Doctor Boom, the best case scenario is you have lethal in two turns. So uh yeah, it definitely makes sense to go for this right here. And we're going to see... Evil ones a... come in handy. Yeah, so there could be lethal right here from uh, Power of Warming. Doesn't get it, but gets a Gold Tower Foot Wound, which is actually pretty good right now. You're right. Yeah, ready for pretty... action. <laughs> He's ready for action. He's perfectly suited for this situation. And, and uh, you yeah. see an... another aspect of having all these 1-1s one that is often overlooked, which is the versatility. Right. You never waste a damage when your board is full of 1-1s. One exactly. You get to put the damage in exactly the right places so nothing gets wasted. Um, whereas obviously if you've got big guys, they do a lot of damage, but sometimes you have to kill a 1-1 one, one with a 5-7 or something, and that's no good for you. Um, right. And this looks like it's going to be the end here. Uh, Lovely Chook, even if he had the perfect cards in hand, there's no way he was going to be able to kill his opponent with just 7 mana. And Wubu looks like he's going to take the first game here. Unless, I mean, there could be clears on the board, but uh, I mean, you're just delaying the inevitable at that point. Yeah, just check this damage. Uh... I mean, he only has he only has nine, right? Because he can't get through. I guess he could earth shock. You have to keep from... the rock biter if you're going to top deck the doom hammer. That's your win. So that's ten. So you have to keep. You've got the hero power. That's two. You've got to keep the mana to do it all with. The thing is, you have to and take kill some things. Right. You have to take um, a lot of damage off the board. There's uh, let's see, um, twelve damage on board. So you have to take off at least three. It looks like he's going to go for the doom guard here, but. I mean, now he's severely overloaded. He has room to play a Doomhammer next turn. 
I suppose he could go. That's uh, actually okay. Doomhammer, Earthshock. He'd be a mana short of lethal. Or would it be lethal? It's like he says he sets up lethal if he gets it. He needs he ancestral the knowledge into lava shock into Doomhammer, I believe, <laughs> which is kind of a. Yeah, because he needs the two overload to buff the. No, just Doomhammer's enough because he Doomhammer's. He's got the silence. No, wait. He did, he only has five mana for Doomhammer. He only has the five mana. Okay, yeah. So he needs the lava shock. Yeah, okay. Right. So. So I he... always like to try and find a way because we know this is <laughs> over, but it just. Just checking. Right. All right. So even more damage coming on the board here. Lovely trick now is at five health. Gets a fling juggler, which is a bit of an interesting tech. We see it occasionally on the Chinese scene, just to you know help in these aggressive lineups or aggressive matches. Unfortunately, it's not going to help in this particular don't lineup. Play it. Yeah, not a good idea to play it. Exactly. That's a, that's a tech that you don't want to show your opponent. And Wubu takes game number one with his Zulok in his best of five series. And Lovely Chook is down. The defending champion might be out in a couple more games. Yeah, and it looks like he's going to have to play a mirror at some point at the very best. Um, yeah, it's really awkward for him having lost that. Um, because... Well, he does have the Paladin, right? So the Paladin is good against both Shaman and Druid. And if his Druid can pick up a win, which, I mean, we've seen Druid win against basically everything. Uh, in particular, I mean, Shaman has, Shaman has beaten Druid before, but uh, I feel like just seeing a lot of these matches, it seems fairly even. And obviously the Shaman might be able to pick up something as well. So not too bad for Lovely Chook. I feel like the Zoo from Mubu was going to get a win unless it faced the Paladin. So at least that's good for him. But uh, yeah, we are, we are going to see that you know, mirror matchup right here and see how it works for both players. This actually might be a long match if the uh, Sir Finley Mergleton goes for a defensive uh, hero power here. Excuse me, just catching up with the class while I'm there. Um, so for Finley Mergleton, yeah, this is... Oh, wow. This <laughs> is going to be exciting. I know right. you love this matchup, right? It's, um... Do I? I? I guess I do. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't, I don't hate it. Here. I don't hate. I, you know, so, this is one of those matchups where I know a lot of people hate face hunter versus face hunter, but for some reason, a lot of people love this matchup uh, just because there's a lot of you know thinking to go on, right? Uh, you don't just hit the face every single time. Right. Uh, you, you hit I the face a lot, but <laughs> yeah, I think it's fascinating just because we had um, shaman versus shaman was like the joke match. I don't right. know three or four months ago, and um, that had to be played in the team story, <laughs> and now. It's the opposite. It's like one of the really important matches for totally different reasons. Yeah, the, the funny thing, thing uh... the, the funny part about that, right, is that Shaman versus Shaman used to be just infuriating because it would never end, right? <laughs> no one ever yeah, had they damage just to win. Kill each other. And they just make totems and have a totem fight and basically just slapping at each other. But now you kill each other so quickly. In any case, Finley Mergleson does come on the field. I wonder if Wubu was actually... He, I don't know if he did that on purpose. Uh, you know, basically what I'm trying to get at is that maybe he played the Totem Golem to bait out something like an Abusive Sergeant, and then, you know, uh, his Sir Finley Mergleton could, you know, win that matchup. That's interesting, actually. Yeah, that's really good planning, if so. And it's, it's very likely as well. Um, just setting up the 1-3 versus the 2-1 there. Right. Uh, yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, it may just be the curve was better that way, but I do like it. <clears throat> By the uh, way, Wubu did go for the in-between, and most likely the best hero power there with the Druid. Uh, obviously, you gain the attack, which can be useful uh, for killing something off, for picking something off, and also you get the armor there. And on top of that, it's basically as good as a hunter hero power once you have the Doom Hammer in play. So definitely, uh, almost certainly was the right choice. Let's see how Lovely Chook responds to this. Going to get a bit of a value... Uh, kill onto this leper gnome, and we'll see if he clears up the uh, totem golem as well. Yeah, really complicated decisions being made here. I know it looks easy, you just kill things, but killing which things at the right time is really, really complicated. Right, um, I mean, the obvious trade looks like, you know, you go for the, the flame juggler into the leper gnome and throw the other two guys in the totem golem, yeah. but... If you do the trade which Lovely Chook is thinking about right now, which is the uh, the uh, Archon Horse Rider into the Leper Gnome and then to the face, then in that situation, what you're doing is you're forcing your opponent to clear. And it looks like he's uh, decided for this, which all things considered might have been the best one. Uh, because yeah. this is really annoying for Wubu to deal with. Three one health minions, one of which was a Divine Shield on. If there's no Urshock, you're in trouble. I know I've mentioned it a couple of times already on this cast, but. 
going wide, having lots of things that look easy to kill is actually a real nuisance for Sherman. Exactly. Uh, he, he's done exactly that. He's put it in a position where, yeah, we've got three two ones. What are you going to do with your one guy and your hero power? Um, and it's just incredibly annoying. It's really difficult to work out what to do. Exactly. Um, he does have a really good hand to deal with it, in fairness. Yeah, I mean, um, the thing is, the, the quality of Wubu's hand is very good. I mean, looking at Lovely Trick's hand, he has that Lava Shock, but you're not really taking up anything. So it definitely makes sense for Wubu right here. Obviously, he can't see his opponent's hand, but it definitely makes sense for him to just clear off as much damage as possible and send it to the long game, particularly because it's a druid hero, hero power. But uh, speaking of which, Lovely Trick does pick up Sir Finley Murgleton. Does he go for double hero power here? Um, it would load, use up all of his mana, so maybe he just opts to go for the Tunnel Trog. And so it looks like, it's, yeah, he's just going to go for the single hero power. And what do you go for here? Do you go for the hunter? Do you go for the warrior? Looks like he's down in cards a bit, and uh, the board situation is getting a bit iffy, so I do like going for the aggressive route. Yeah, it's looking like he's going to have to find some way to get the repeated damage. Um, Warrior's just not going to cut it. It doesn't impact the board. And if you're not going to impact the board, you've got to impact your opponent as second choice. I think the 1-1s one might be too slow, it's definitely worth a consideration. You see his mindset, though. He was choosing between the Paladin and the Hunter. I mean, with nothing to use right now, or with nothing to really do, um, you know, he he could think that the Paladin might be good overall in the end. Uh, yeah, because you, you get one guy, then two, then three, and suddenly you're, <clears throat> you've got more damage per turn than hitting the Hunter power. But I think he's concluded that, that actually wouldn't be the case. Right. And yeah, right. He's, he's, he's now going to the face and... Exactly. And every single dude you make, I mean, you might as well have just hero powered, right? Because that does the, as much damage as that dude would ever do. Yeah. But uh, This yes. will buy him some time. Going aggro like this will also buy him time to draw more cards. Exactly. Because uh, we will have to actually deal with this before starting to win the game. Um, it and shouldn't we'll... take him long, by the way. And does Wubu have to prioritize hero powering a lot here just to get that one health? Looks like he's just going to go aggressive himself, though he might have to clear this board... Um, I don't particularly know if I agree with this. Uh, I, I kind of like having... Like, when else are you going to get this Doomhammer down with the overload going on? I, I feel that even though he maybe didn't want to do this, this is kind of the only turn he might have five mana for a while. Now he can overload himself in future with everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I feel that maybe this was forced rather than like his first mm -hmm. like, most exciting choice, most comfortable choice. Right, so looks like he's just going to go for a clear under the Argent Horse Rider and, you know, figures that, oh, wow, okay. Uh, he, I was going to say, he just figures that this Surf and Murgleton only does one damage, but this Tunnel Trog is going to do a lot more, and this is just really painful here for Wubu. And, and this I, is a really good play here, because when he took that hero power, he had to visualize how the game might pan out. It didn't look particularly great for him when he took the hunter, when he took the hunter power. Um, he's visualized the situation. It's paid off really well for him. Right. Uh, obviously, you know, these getting these feral spirits is a huge deal. Uh, but yeah, definitely, like you said, I mean, he saw a plan where if you continue to hero power, you're going to get your opponent down. There's no healing. There's a little bit of healing with that druid hero power, but uh, as long as your opponent doesn't have something crazy in hand and some, you know, basically meaning feral spirits of his own plus, you know, stuff on top of that, you're in good shape. And it looks like Lovey Chook is close to, you know, finishing this off with this uh, totem golem totem gun. Uh, he's actually going to hit the face with the Murgleton, which makes sense because now he's representing lethal on board. He's again forcing Wubu to deal with this board and he has to use even more damage to do so. Uh, Wolf yeah, is reasonable, but, uh, you know, it's, again, just so much trouble here for Wubu. And even if the board is dealt with, uh, six being a number that you can do in three hero powers, as opposed to seven. I know, I know you've got the druid power, so it's not quite that simple, but um, it's always nice to get your opponent down to an even number when you have the hunter power going on. And the one interesting thing about this, right, is that Wubu, look, he's at he's down to four charges. So, you know, he's going to use so many charges just to deal with the board, and he's going to run out of damage, essentially. Yeah, it's really interesting because his hand looked like if the game went long, he looked like he would be struggling to lose. And he's done nothing wrong. Mm. Um, I mean, he chose to load up the Doom Hammer when he could have maybe cleared a board. But it didn't, you know, I, I didn't call it as wrong. It oh, was fine. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that just happened. Um, I think you saw to hit the phase, right? Uh, what yeah. can you possibly lose to? Um, 
Because you need to get your opponent if you're if your Murgleton dies without your opponent obviously attacking into it, which obviously he wouldn't do. Um, let's see, there's there's six damage on field. If there's a rock biter that would add another six to go to twelve, and then you could die to a crackle maybe. So you're actually in danger of dying, but you also might not draw any damage, so this might be your only chance. What's double rock biter? Um well, double rock biter. That easily. Earthshock's been a hand a long time, so he's probably suspecting at least one rock biter here. Right, it could be because he didn't need the rock biter to clear the wolves earlier, so that so, definitely could be the case. So he may be wow. here. This is yeah. so scary. I mean, we do see that there's no real way for we would have lethal here, but yeah, gonna I think it's double rock biter would be scary. Double rock biter hero power is a lot of damage. I think that might be lethal five eight. Yeah, double rock biter hero power would be lethal. He'd do nine twice exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, in that case, you don't play around. <laughs> so, yeah, so why do you need the extra one? Yeah, you're right. Killing that, um, he didn't need. I mean, uh, well, I mean, not just double rock biter though. So if he leaves the two one on the board, then you die to something like rock biter plus crackle, for instance. But it yeah. looks like it's all moot because he Lava must have found a situation where the lava, lava burst, and it's going to be it. Where rock biter plus a card was relevant. Right. Yeah, rock, rock biter plus something would have been relevant there. He could have lost to Rockbiter Crackle, for instance, which he hadn't really seen in that match so far. There was there were cards on the left side that he was a bit worried about. Uh, one of them could have been Rockbiter. But in the end, Lovely Took, he is able to take that match with that Lava Burst off the top. And honestly, this game, this match, it's looking not too great for Wubu all of a sudden because of that win in the mirror match. And then we've talked about this a lot. If you win a mirror match, something, sometimes things can really turn your way. And right now, Lovely Took has Paladin and Druid versus Druid and Shaman. So there'll be another mirror match, but it's this time around. It's one that um, Wubu urgently needs to win to have, you know, to be in it. This time, if Lovely Chute lost that mirror match, he was kind of not all over, but he was he was in real, real trouble. And when we're analysing before the game, you look at that as a fifty-fifty thing. Well, if he's in real trouble, if he loses it, he's in some kind of trouble now. And now that's flipped over to some degree now. Exactly, and looks like we're going to give it. Excuse me, we're going to be getting into the Secret Paladin versus the Agro Shaman. This is a matchup that definitely favors the Secret Paladin. Uh, it takes really a fast start for the Shaman to get the win here. Yeah, um, it favors the Secret Paladin, but you do have to plot your course very carefully. Um, it's very easy, you know, obviously not in these conditions, but on ladder or something like that, if you switch off the Shaman Ooh. Beach, this is a so, yeah, usually this is the stuff of nightmares for opponents, right? When you go, you know, Dr. Six into Dr. Seven into Dr. Eight. Uh, the right. unofficial nicknames for Mysterious Challenger, Dr. Boom, and, uh, you know, Tyrion Forward Ring. But uh, in this particular case, not the hand you really want against an aggressive shaman. Yeah, because you don't get to seven. <laughs> you yeah. quite often don't get to six. So, yeah, the reason that's bad is that, you know, you've got to get to those turns and obviously... I mean, just Tyrion's irrelevant in this match. It's just right. a waste. Uh, On the other hand, Wubu has a bit of an awkward turn here. He doesn't have any way to buff up this Tunnel Trog, so no real way to take off the, the first half of this Hunter Creeper. Not that you would really want to do that anyway, but uh, you don't want to play. You don't want to be playing this Lava Shock because that's so valuable later. And this Lepronome just dies to the Hana Creeper, which is bad for you, obviously. So, uh, kind of a difficult spot for him. I imagine he just plays the Lepronome and hits the face here. Maybe just maybe he does just lava shock. I guess I think you would totem before you lava shock, honestly. That's fair, yeah. Because so you don't he'll, he's going with the leopard gnome. Right. And the leopard gnome does kill I mean, it seems bad, right? You're giving your opponent more stuff. Wow, knife juggler is very good. I guess the leopard gnome does exactly the same as the lava shock. It's just a two mana way of killing the spiders, so right. that's fine. So, um, Lovey Took not going to take any risks here, just going to go for the kill on the Lepronome right away. One knife hits the face, one knife hits the Tunnel Truck, everything's fair and balanced and even <laughs> here, so... <laughs> nice work. Um, yeah, right. uh, have to kill that guy. Yeah, have to kill the Knife Juggler, obviously. And as the Tunnel Truck, what do you do here? I mean, uh, I you could... Is there any point in killing a guy? There might not be, right? And we can see there is, because the cog hammer is actually relevant here. Right, but I mean, it'll get a kill regardless, so I don't... I mean, even with the cog hammer, I don't know if it matters. Mm. But I, I would go face from his side here, and see what happens. Yeah, uh, just looking at all the possibilities that could be coming from Paladin, is probably the case. I guess the one thing maybe is something like... 
I don't know, Knight Juggler plus uh, Noble Sacrifice, perhaps? Uh, but, yeah, uh, I don't know. It probably yeah, needs Noble to Noble Sacrifice there. on its own is actually a reason to kill. It's just to limit the number of mm -hmm. things that the Paladin has going on. Um, you want your 1-1 one, one to die, not your 1-2, so you might as well get an extra point out of it while you can, I guess. Let me see this next Knife Juggler. So, Lovely Duke is top decking his way into this game. Uh, which he's entitled to do when he's drawn all his heavy stuff, obviously. Right. It, I mean, I guess the the one thing that could have gone wrong for him is he starts top decking secrets, which are pretty useless, right? But honestly, it's not looking too bad for Lovely Chook. And I mean, basically, you're seeing it right here, right? I mean, it's not the greatest hand for either player, but the Paladin is taking the lead. It's taking the lead. And if it does happen to go long, which is looking like it might, and obviously he's trying to force it to go long, then it really is all over with those six, seven, eight. Ooh, this this uh, choice here for Wubu is very poor. You don't want to be healing yourself. You need to be killing your opponent as quickly as possible. Don't want to go for the rogue because that you can't get any use of that out of that once you have the uh, Doomhammer up. So it just has to go for you know matching hero powers from his opponent and keep her Voldemort right on time here. I imagine you just go for that. Yeah, I yeah. can't see a situation. I mean, what what would you make smaller? So yeah, you you always wanted to make your guy bigger with that in this matchup. Uh, so Love Chuk actually is uh, sorry to cut you off there. Love Chuk actually attacking with his cock hammer. I feel like he's a high love life total where he could use his health as a bit of an advantage or a bit of a resource. Excuse me. Um, it sounds crazy against uh, aggro shaman, but if you're able to keep a board lead, you're sometimes you force the shaman to use damage on your board, and that helps you in the long run anyway. I wonder if he's thinking he's going to use it now, but he's never going to use it twice. Um, maybe he's playing. I mean, we haven't. There's no way that anyone plays Harrison in Shamans. So there's no reason to do it for that reason. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he just thought he's never going to use it twice, and so uh, he seems to be regretting it now. Actually, as it happens. Right. That's, that's the look around. He's going. Did I even need that two damage last turn? <laughs> yeah, exactly. By the way, what do you think about this noble sacrifice? Unless you see a Doomhammer right now, which you probably would have seen last turn. What wait, was uh, overloaded last turn? That would have made a big difference. So we we saw a lava shock. Yeah, so he, yes, was, he was overloaded. Yeah. thank you, Shrink. He was overloaded, and he played the lava shock and nothing else. So right, so uh, there could have been one horse rider, haven't we? Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's um, yeah, the, I I feel like both uh, noble sacrifices are extremely important. I suppose since he has six into seven and eight, he doesn't really want to be playing noble sacrifice for the next three turns anyway. So in that sense, it definitely makes sense. I don't like playing it there personally because I want my challenges to thin all this rubbish out of my deck. Right. Well, but uh, if you do so... draw the Noble Sacrifice, it's actually not too bad. If you think about uh... it. If he plays the, the uh, Mysterious Challenger now, and really the only thing you're preventing yourself from pulling is that Noble Sacrifice, you're actually not too mm -hmm. sad about it. So there is that. In that case, that, that's probably why you do it. Then. If, you, if you don't mind actually Ooh. top decking it. That is the worst one of the worst cards you can draw, though, for <laughs> Lovely Juke. Imagine he's not playing two Repentances. But uh, I guess it doesn't really matter because you're not going to, you know, get a Seems repentance off anyway. Not. Actually, um, that's not the worst thing ever because I suppose... Well, there's three secrets up now. I'm to kind of talking to myself, right? Uh, there's three secrets now. But uh, if, for instance, you know, it was competitive spirits, you would want that to be uh, up right away rather than having to play it later. And this repentance is not going to get much value anyway, so I suppose it's fine. But yeah, we are seeing why Secret Paladin... Again, this can happen, right? Uh, both players... I suppose the Secret Paladin drew into reasonable options, but at the start it wasn't that great. And uh, now Secret Paladin seems like it's running away with the game. Yeah, and yeah, those options, like we said, if it goes long 6, 7, and probably not even 8, I'm just going to swing it. It may not even get to 7 here. This may be... It's the point where the Shaman unloads all its direct damage on your guys that you know you've won, and that's exactly what's going to happen here. Right. We might even see a concede. I mean, even if... If Lovely Chook had no cards in hand right now and was forced to use hero power, I still think he wins this game. Uh, there's just way too much damage and, you know, we, we would have to just clear everything. And Secret Paladin really, just showing how versatile the deck is, uh, which is obviously <laughs> why everybody hates it. Like, it, it can just <laughs> beat everything. you down, but it can also stop you beating it down and then... Right. And then just get on with proceedings. Such a powerful deck. I'm surprised we don't see it more... In we see it a lot, but you know, well, you I, I just thought it'd be used like universally. 
Yeah, I mean, the thing is, people are realizing how to beat it. Sometimes uh, players bring, you know, three counters to it, which sounds like it'd be crazy. It sounds like something that's not possible, right? But uh, you can find ways uh, to, de to definitely counter it. So sometimes it's something that uh, people don't really want to rely on. But yeah, going to be a kill on this Totem Golem. And uh, do you hit both the face here? You have lethal damage anyway, so I think you actually kill us 1-1, as strange as it sounds. So I mean, it's still... When you uh, kill the... Yeah, I was going to say that actually uh, Walmans are excellent materials for the uh, boom bots to get higher to higher damage to face. So right, but you still have lethal. Just anyway. thinking, yeah, I was just thinking, yeah, you put lethal up, especially if you chose to kill the the two one last game, which was the only minion standing on a similar life total as well. Um, interesting that this time he chose that a one one wasn't a problem. Maybe he did the math last time. Maybe he worked out that last time two was the magic number, so he didn't need to kill the one. And by the way, not playing around Doomhammer, Rockbiter, Rockbiter plus something that that turn, but um... that's what I'm saying. Maybe last game he worked out that a two one was enough, but a one one wasn't, so he knew the math from last game. Right. I think he was on exactly eighteen last time as well. So whatever it was he played around last turn, I think he knew that it was exact last time, and so he could leave this one one up because he made that decision quickly this time. All right. Uh, well, uh, in any case, Lovely Chook does take that game, and he is down to his druid to be able to clear and go on to the round of eight, who was going to have to come back in the situation using his druid and shaman. So definitely an uphill battle for Wu. But we'll see if he can bring it back. But uh, uh, it's going to be difficult, and he's going to have to at least win a mirror matchup and also the shaman versus druid. Uh, what do you think his chances are here? I, I think that Lovely Chook. Um has every chance of just, well, he has obviously got every chance. He's got the 50-50, which I think he's probably slightly favoured in anyway, just because of his record in this event. Mm -hmm. And then, taking on the Shaman. I mean, Shaman can win that, for sure. But well, we'll find out know, right now, yeah. obviously. Uh, Innervate is definitely good to have uh, when you're facing these aggressive decks. Thorson, not too much, but he could potentially go for that on turn three if he wanted to, uh, using the you know the combination of the wild growth and innervate. Uh, it'll be up to Wubu to put as much pressure on as possible before you know Thorson does some crazy stuff. And the ancient's really important in this match because quite often the the card advantage takes care of itself in this matchup mm -hmm. um, because your guys are bigger than their guys, so you don't need to draw as many cards as normal. And so the five healing actually becomes a really tangible option that you can actually use right so I, th I think this is pretty as good a good hand as you can start with it doesn't mean it's all over though because that's a well, heck of a hand there on the other side of the board yeah i mean for the druid it's nice to have you know <laughs> you know thoris in on turn three but typically you want to be able to just you know stop the opponent right now and right now he doesn't yeah. really have the ability to do that uh, I still think with all the stuff on board, you probably still go for the Thorson because then your Wrath costs one, which is nice, obviously. So yeah, yeah. going to be the Thorson onto the field. Going to be nice for him. Um, but yeah, both of these players actually with pretty good starts here. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of damage in the next two turns coming out of the Shaman's hand here. Right, he does have to take care of this Thorson though, because it yes. can be very dangerous. Even though you're the aggressive deck, it's just uh, it can really do work if you let it stay up too long. Yeah, and already, I mean, we're seeing now we're going to be able to play Azure Drake into Wrath for one example here. Right, but Wild Growth um, yeah, is... And then heal face and play a 5-5 five, five next turn if you want. Right. Uh, the problem is that Wrath is definitely what you don't want to be picking up right now. Picks up a Lotha, which is nice um, to be able to shut down the Shaman for potentially a turn if, you know, he uses all his minions this turn, for instance. But, uh... Yeah, it's it's basically both players are hoping they draw what they need, right? For Wubu, it needs you know some more minions to stick on the field as well as some more damage to be picked up. And for Lovely Chook, just wants to be able to hold them off as long as possible. What do you think Lovely Chook should do? Should he heal face for five or and rely on his top decks, or should he actually just take the chance he doesn't die and draw two cards? I feel that he probably has to heal, but yeah, he's taking too much damage. There's it's pretty much inevitable. So once you make the decision to go for uh, the cards, you have to kill your opponent in about three turns, I would say. Otherwise, it's basically over. What do you think of that trade there as well? The trade was interesting. Um, you're, I mean, it isn't a Druid Drake. It can do a lot of... I mean, you don't really think of Druid doing that much damage. Uh, you think of maybe like a Rogue or something like that, but uh, you know, things like Swipe, things like Wrath can be very dangerous, so I do like taking care of it. 
And if you don't, I mean, you're basically your flamethrower tone is gonna, or it might die anyway. So I kind of like it. Okay. He decided he needs the cards. Wow. So, so bold play by the two out. here. So he's he's planning on this game going more than two more turns, um, which might turn out to be ambitious. We'll see. <laughs> but we we can see the hands, of course, which always helps. Right. Uh, there's a lot of damage coming out of his hand this turn. The nice thing for, for Wu Wu here is he knows, he's seen every single discounted card, right? So he knows there's not going to be any crazy lethal right now. Yep. And, or obviously he's at 30 health, so it wouldn't matter. But uh, he, he knows that nothing's gonna, crazy going to come out here, so he can basically play, you know, pretty pretty greedy and just hit the face if you're Wu Wu. Yeah, especially, like, you know, he knows the Lovely Chute doesn't have stuff like you say. He's chosen to draw the cards there, so... It's... And this is the, this is the difficult part, right? If uh, Lovely Chook had gone for healing here, uh, he would have had this Keeper and the Shade anyway, and he would have had the Lothab. And I don't know, this Druid of Claw, I don't know if it helps. It, obviously, it's a nice card, but when you're in such a desperate position, I don't know how much it helps. Yeah, you don't have much time to silence Nort 3 Totems. I mean, obviously, he had to do it, save 4 damage, but yeah, that's game. It might be. Um... Four, four, eight, uh, and plus three. I don't think it is, is actually. Is that? I might be wrong. No, he's a bit off. But you still go face here because your opponent can't kill you even with uh, yeah. even with combo. And it's and unlikely have... for him to have sure. interrate combo anyway. And if he heals, you still kill him. Right, so yeah, this was definitely the, the turn to go face here for Wubu. That's amazing. So... I'm calling it. It's going to be two two. This is, there's no way. There's no way out of this one. And we're going to see. I mean, um, you, you can see what Lovely Chook's thinking about. As we see, have a bit of a connection issues, but uh, going to be Wrath into Drew the Claw Taunt. You can't go to Lothar here, or else you're just dead. Actually, no, no. But you're dead too with the Doom Hammer, right? So uh, going to be Wrath probably onto the um, Trog. I guess he could draw for a card here and throw away the Shade, but I guess that's what you have to do. This is the awkward part, right? He already drew cards. No, do you draw? He can't. More? Yeah, you can't spend it because you need to play the four six. Exactly. So yeah, he can't. So he does this, takes out some guys on the board, and there's actually... okay. Oh, there is lethal. Yeah. So there's the lava yeah, shot. There's... Yeah, there's just lava shot. But this is actually the right play because it clears the board and gives him a chance to win. He's actually going to hit the face here, which is probably correct. Uh, you don't really, you can't really, uh, you know, not use that three damage right you here. You want a double doom hammer for eight? Oh. Good luck. I'll top pick you. So, got the lot, got the Urshock anyway. It wouldn't have mattered. But yeah, tie um, game or tie series. Excuse me, two to two, and we're going to game five to see who can move on to the round of eight. By the way, Strink, yeah. I think that there's a bit of feedback there, so uh, just, just uh, I don't know to caution you. So we're going to see Druid versus Druid. Um, again. Always a meme that it's complete luck based, but it's not. There's a lot of skill in a lot of the games here, as long as one of the players doesn't run off to an early start. Um, and we've actually seen players come back um, from being significantly behind on mana just by grinding back into the game. We've seen we've seen players outplay their opponents in the Druid Mirror. Right. Um, I mean, not too long ago, I think Ray Allen outplayed somebody. <laughs> a few weeks ago with, with, in the Druid Mirror when he got off to a terrible start his opponent did something like turn 2 Dr. Boom or something it was, it was crazy right. Raven Idol at last <laughs> so yeah Raven Idol in the hand of Wu Wu Darnassus in the hand of Lovely Chook uh, Darnassus isn't too bad in this matchup uh, as long as you don't draw it late it can put a lot of pressure on your opponent mm -hmm. and can help you ramp if, they're, if they don't clear it too fast uh, it's against a bit more control -y lineups or control -y decks excuse me where Darnassus can be an issue and we see kind of a mixed hand here for Lovely Chook. He can get off to a fast start, but he's going to be relying on uh, drawing into stuff in the future. And uh, but compared to Wubu, it's pretty good. The question is, if you're if you're um, Lovely Chook here, this is the hand of Wubu, by the way. Things look flipped, but uh, we're looking at Wubu's decision as he decides what to do. I'm a fan of turn one Raven Idol when you go for spell. By the way, I'm a fan of going for spell nearly all the time. But I'd rather wait until much later in the game mm -hmm. um, to find out, you know, what I need. I feel that you lose a lot of the versatility of the card by playing it on turn one like that, especially 
as the only thing he could realistically have found that would help him next turn is wild growth, and that's only a um, a three in uh, twenty two chance or something. Right. Uh, it does use the mana up, and sometimes you can't. Sometimes you're wanting that mana later, but so. I want to talk about what Lovichuk just did here. He was afraid of a Wrath. I don't know if he was afraid of a Wrath uh, being kept by Wubu, or if he was afraid of a Wrath being taken off the Raven Idol here, but <laughs> if he played the uh, coin Innervate Shredder, and it gets Wrath, then all of a sudden you're looking at just having a 2-drop, which is not too big of a deal. So he's baiting out the Wrath right here onto the Sarnassus Aspirin, but he's going to be a bit... Uh, disappointed when nothing comes out because i mean now you're kind of floating a mana if you go into the shredder next turn or you know even with the wild growth so looks like it's going to be that minion this time silver hand regent booty bodyguard oracle light oracle i imagine you just go for the silver hand well I, you do have the innervate into the um the uh azure drake so uh maybe not the best but you know the one ones are difficult to, for drew to deal with on a lot of cases so Definitely is okay here. And uh, Lovely Chuck picks up a Shea, which is nice for him. Uh, it helps clear out his curve right now. Going to be looking for bigger cards in the future, but for the present time, he's probably okay with it. Yeah, I just realized he could have got um, Innovate off that first wave, Knight or Wrath as well, like you suggested. So it wasn't so bad as I thought. Right. Um, in a position now with... I mean, you have to deal with Aspen sooner rather than later, obviously. Um... And he's in a position where he's going to struggle to do that. You don't want to... The only way to do it would be absolutely horrible with Innovate. Stab <laughs> Draw, Innovate, Hero um, Power. It's so good. Yeah, you're not doing that. So I guess you just probably have to Innovate out the Drake and trust to some luck. You can go for the longer game. There are right. a lot of options here, actually. A lot of options with the Wild Growth, with the... the Silver well, Hand. You could go for the Silver Hand Regent just to force a Wrath out of your opponent and basically prevent them from doing anything, but preventing them from doing anything isn't the greatest here because you're already behind. And also, if you innervate into the Drake, you have two chances to pick up something like a Shredder anyway. And if you don't pick up anything, you could still go for the Wild Growth. So I like going for the Drake here. And you kind yep. of dominate the board, and maybe you might force you know this Shade to unveil itself. Raven Owl uh, picked up for Lovely Chook. Um, and here's the tricky part, right? Do you let this Drake live? Your opponent has four mana, uh, but Swipe doesn't do that much right now. I suppose it could uh, if, you know, the, for instance, the uh, Shredder were taken out and then, you know, a 3 2 popped out, then you swipe, but then that involves something like an Innervate. So, yeah, I can definitely see where. I mean, this, it's not too scary right now considering where the health of your minions are at right now. Yeah, this looks okay. Um, you can Rave Nidal from Minion, of course, which is definitely not the favoured option, but in the spot that Lovely Chook's in, maybe next turn he'll do that and just try and pick up something to do with that Innovate right. that is um, <clears throat> board-based. Mm -hmm. um, and by waiting one more turn, he does get to make that decision next turn rather than playing guessing games. So I like this play a lot. Yep. And Shade being picked up here by Wubu, not too bad. Obviously, he was able to play that Silver Hand Regent regardless, but uh, probably better to develop this right now. And then likely just takes out this Darnassus. Yeah, you'd think they take out the Darnassus just to slow down this. Um, we were talking about earlier that like when one person's massively ahead on mana, if you if you cut that advantage down. Right. Get ahead yourself, yeah. Ooh, is... Savage Roar is not what you want to see right here. So I imagine Lovely Chook just goes for a minion right here in this spot. And, uh, I, well, I guess you could go for the Savage Roar clear on this Ezra, Jake, just so you don't have to use your own minions here. So that could be a possibility even after he goes for this card. And he's going to go for the spell instead. So Living Roots is okay, but you're kind of confining yourself here. You really need to draw a minion in this case if you are... Uh, lovely Chook. He can have a redo. Um, right. So I've changed my mind. I'll go for a minion now. Well, it looks like uh, he's just going to ramp up a ton, kill off this Azure Drake. Yeah. He, does he attack is the question. I think um, he has to. I think, I think this plan is putting him on, um, I'm going to kill you in two turns. Well, if you on leave turn up... seven, I'm going to try and combo you, kill you with my Drake and my combo. Well, if your plan is to combo him on turn seven, then you basically have guaranteed lethal as long as your opponent doesn't have a taunt up because of this okay. shade. So as long as it stays alive, you basically can just kill your opponent. Though, again, like you mentioned, he could just get him down to 18 right now, which is definitely uh, a cause for concern. 
Yeah. Eighteen. Don't unveil. Yes, you probably can unveil the shade actually here as well as a five-five. Mm -hmm. So if we trade, it, I think it, I think this combo is looking like it. What if you just out. savage right now? You get your opponent down to six. What and then just force the turn after? Yeah. <laughs> so that you see the worst you, actually. Right. So nine on the field. You savage or for six plus hero power. Is seven, so that's sixteen damage. You get your opponent down to six, and you force them to either hero power, which is obviously you know a bad situation for them, or um, you know you. Yeah. Uh... I think this is the plan he went for. As soon as he went for spell, and yeah, I think I think this is the plan he just wanted from that point onwards. Is I'm going to try and kill you on turn seven. What do you think about not attacking here? I mean, you get your opponent down to twelve, which is obviously in combo range. And have, making your opponent deal with your board. I mean, how does he taunt plus deal with your board? Um, I guess it's kind of. I guess you figure that. Wrath plus trade in the 3 3 plus. Um, Drew the Claw. Drew the Claw. And then kill this shredder. Yeah, I suppose that, you know, worst case scenario, your opponent does something to pre prevent you from having lethal, and you still have the shade on the board as kind of a, a you know, last case yeah. or last resort, essentially. But uh, I don't think there's anything that Wubu can do here. Uh, he can reveal his shade, get back up to 22, but at... Um, actually, no, he can get up to 22. So there's going to be... Oh, there's 22 damage on the board. What am I talking about? Yeah. Because the shade's going to yeah, grow it's, by it's, one. There's, there's stuff everywhere here. Yeah, so it's going to be <laughs> actually exactly 22 damage. I was thinking that Lovely Chute couldn't get to um, uh, to 11 uh, mana in order to do double combo, but single combo is going to be enough here. And he planned that a long way out and obviously had a feel for the situation. Alright, so the defending champion, Lovely Chook, is still going to be live in this tournament. He advances to the round of eight and he will face off against Ray Allen in that round. Going to be a great.